Hey everyone, so I just got a comment like an hour ago from Fernando and basically he wants to know what the answer book for calculus is like. So this is the answer book for Michael Spivak's Calculus 3rd edition and this is the answer book for the 3rd edition. So I just thought I would make a really quick video to talk about this answer book because it's a little bit different from other answer books. Also, there is some really good news. There is a newer answer book available. Um, I saw it and I will put a link in the description. And basically it gives you the answers to the third and the fourth edition. So like, let's say that I didn't have this book, you know, I could buy that one and it would give me the answers to this book. Or if I had the fourth edition, I can buy the same book and I have the answers. So it's kind of cool that they did that. Okay, so let's go ahead and open these up and let me just show you what this looks like. Okay, so I want to show you something really important about this answer book. So this is the case for this version of the answer book that I have. So these are the answers in the back of the book to Michael Spivak's calculus. So you see here it says number one and it has a one, a three, and a six. So there are actually six parts to question number one. So in the actual textbook, you get answers to three of them. Okay, so now if we look here at the solutions manual, you see you get answers to the other three. So basically the solutions manual, the one I have, fills in the gaps. So here's another example. And on number nine, here's three solutions. And then let's go to number nine in this book just to check. I'm just gonna show you, I think it's one page back. So number nine, there's two solutions, right? So you have one, two, and then you have three, four, five. And number nine is actually five parts. So by having this, you basically have um, all of the solutions to Michael Spivak's calculus. And there's a newer edition of his book now, it's the fourth edition. And again, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'll leave a link in the description to the combined solutions manual. So that's pretty cool. So like, if you don't have Spivak's calculus, you can get Spivak and the new one. And if you already have an older edition like me, you know, you, you can get the one that has the combined solutions I think it's cool they did that. A lot of times when they make um, solutions manuals, they, um, they make them per edition. So it's really cool that you're getting solutions to both editions. Yeah, so you can see here the level of detail in some of the solutions. Let C be in each I sub N. If F of C is less than zero, then there is some delta greater than zero such that F of X is less than zero for all X and the closed interval AB with that condition there. So yeah, it looks like it's basically going through the proof or giving you major hints on how to do the problems in this legendary textbook. By the way, um, Michael Spivak died in 2020, I believe in October. So I, I forgot how old um, he got to be. I guess I can look it up really quick. Let's see, Michael Spivak. So yeah, I mean, it's really, really sad. Yeah, Michael David Spivak, his middle name was David, was an American mathematician, yeah. He has other books, by the way, on differential geometry. And um, yeah, they're supposed to be really good. I don't have them. Yeah, he lived to be 80 years old. Pretty cool. So yeah, so the solutions manual, you get, you know, tons of solutions. Um, I mean, look at, let's look at this one. The integral becomes, compare with problem six, eight. Oh, interesting, so you're here, wow. Wow, pretty intense, right? There's some pretty intense integrals. Um, I've worked through some of the exercises in this book. I've worked out some of the integrals. I've done a couple of the proofs and stuff. So I haven't worked out like every problem in this book, but I've worked out, you know, quite a few. A lot of them are a lot easier. Like a lot of the computational problems, you know, they look scary. Um, you know, so, you know, if you're a Calc 1 student and you see some of these problems in uh, Spivak's calculus, you're like, whoa, you know, like if you're just starting out, some of these problems are a little, a little bit nuts. You know what I was thinking would be really fun? To look at some of these integrals in Michael Spivak's calculus. Why not check it out? Let's just talk about how to solve some of these. So like this first one here, basically you would break it up, right? You would write it as this term over this term plus this term over this term, and then simplify and go from there. Pretty cool stuff, right? Look at that one. That one looks really cool. A to the X over B to the X. <laughs> it's not fun stuff. Tan squared. Yeah, these are fun. Some of them are a little bit different. Some you might have seen, like this is a really common one. 
e to the x sine e to the x. I feel like I have a video for some of these, for a lot of these actually. Yeah, that's one that um, I would often assign um, as a homework question. And there's actually a differential equation um, where that would come up often. It's one I'm really familiar with. These are pretty simple. Integration by parts. You can also use tabular on the first two examples. This third integral here, that's what I like to call a looper. Basically, you call it something like you call it, you know, you call this like I, and then you basically end up integrating it twice, and then like it appears in its own integration. So basically you solve for it as a variable and you come up with the answer. That one you can use tabular. Yeah, some substitutions. Secant cubed, yeah, that's a notorious one. First time I ever saw secant cubed, uh, that integral, that was uh, in a DE class. And basically it's very similar to this one, but a little bit trickier. You basically end up memorizing it after a while because it comes up so much. Yeah, these aren't too bad. All right, now we're really getting into the thick of it here. So these are supposed to be a little bit harder. Oh yeah, yeah, these are pretty tricky. The previous problem provided gratis a haphazard selection of rational functions to be integrated. Here's a more symmetric selection. <laughs> number seven, potpourri, no holds barred. Oh, number one is actually super easy. Uh, this first one here, right? Don't you just let u be the arctan function and the derivative is one over one plus x squared. So you basically just get u du. So what would that be? u squared over two and then you just get arctan squared over two. The world's sneakiest substitution is undoubtedly t equals the tangent of x over two, x equals two arctan t, and dx is equal to two over one plus t squared dt. And then they tell you, as they found in a previous problem, you get this. And so basically you use this information to do these integrals here. Some of these integrals are really tough. Um, if you do them another way, um, which is possible in some cases, right? You don't have to necessarily follow this approach. Sometimes it might be easier, sometimes it might be harder. That's the thing with integration. A lot of times there's more than one way to do it. And sometimes, again, it's an easy way and sometimes it's a harder way. So yeah, pretty cool. Ooh, reduction formulas. Find a reduction formula for x to the n, e to the x. Oh, here's a proof. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of want to do that now. Like, <laughs> I kind of want to work through that. Yeah, pretty cool book, right? Anyways, got carried away showing you some stuff here in the book, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what the solutions manual is like. Um, again, it's got, I mean, look at all this. Yeah, I'm just gonna give it a whiff. Ah, oh, yeah, really good stuff. So hopefully this has been helpful to someone who's wondering about the solutions manuals. That's it. Good luck and take care.